I am optimistic, positive, and excited about chiropractic, reaching people with my practice and building an exceptional life of productivity, prosperity, and generosity while filled with love, fitness, and fun. My purpose is to become a smarter, more powerful, capable, driven, and superior version of myself by ever increasing my awareness, knowledge, understanding, motivation, hands-on skill, communication skill, and mastery in the art of exceptional living. When you train with me, every single podcast is going to bring you four things. You're naturally attracting more great new patients. See them coming in. You're becoming a more capable motivator and persuader of people. You're empowered to make smarter, long-term decisions. And you're energized physically, mentally, and financially. From the Laws of Success in 16 Lessons, I have turned to page 192. Let's see what it says. Lesson 7. Enthusiasm. Ooh, interesting word there. Enthusiasm. 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 N. E-N, which means within. Thuse comes from theos, theology, God, energy, God within, energy within, life within, enthusiasm. Hill writes, it's a state of mind that inspires and arouses one to put action into the task at hand. (laughs) Is this big? Is it possible to be highly successful in anything without enthusiasm? No, because enthusiasm is will. It is motivation. It is drive. It is the energy behind getting up to do anything. If you don't have enthusiasm, you don't do anything. Wow. Enthusiasm is the most important factor entering into sales. It is by far the most vital factor that also enters into any public speaking. You have to have the enthusiasm and the energy to be able to be in front and lead people. You have to have the enthusiasm or the energy or the excitement about yourself, your product or service to be able to get other people to want to buy it. Okay, her enthusiasm is contagious. Energy. If someone's excited about something, it gets other people excited about it. How excited are you about chiropractic? Really? How excited are you about your office? How excited are you about your systems and your procedures and your scripting that people are entering into that process? How excited are you about that? Let's take a look here. Enthusiasm is the vital fourth force with which you recharge your body and develop a dynamic personality. Enthusiasm. It begins by the doing of the work or rendering of the service which one likes best. Person goes to chiropractic college, graduates, and is so deep in the profession with debt and obligation and time and effort and energy We have no choice but to like it the best because that's what we signed up for. That's what I signed up for. Got to Cairo school. I was enthusiastic about it then. I was enthusiastic during Cairo school. I was enthusiastic upon graduation. And years later, I'm as enthusiastic as ever, if not more. Why? Because I told myself I would give this chiropractic thing a go. So I might as well give it my all. What else are you going to go and do? What's cooler than chiropractic? Chiropractic is such a cool thing. 
spine, vertebra, power. It's unbelievable. Easy to have enthusiasm for something as incredible as chiropractic. Enthusiasm chiropractic. Happiness, says Hill, the final object of all human effort is a state of mind that can be maintained only through the hope of future achievement. If you don't have any thing to look forward to, how can you be happy now? Happiness comes from the hope of things getting better in the future in different areas that matter to you. I'm going to read that again as he writes it. It, it is incredible. That is why this book is so smartly written. Happiness, which is the final object of all human effort. I want a bigger practice. Why? Because you can be more happy. You want more money. Why? Happy. Health. Why? Happy. Relationships. Why? Happy. Everything we do is because we think it will bring another click up of happiness. Happiness, the final object of all human effort, is a state of mind that can be maintained only through the hope of future achievement. Wow. Hope, achievement, enthusiasm, happiness, effort. Look at those words. Let me change the order of those. Enthusiasm brings effort towards hope of future achievement, and as a result, we have happiness. It's unbelievable. Enthusiasm. I'd like to read this entire chapter to you. I'd like to read it for myself. I think, in fact, I think I'll just set that aside and take a little closer look at that. See, Nick, again, it's not about, ah, oh, Tori, tell me a good book to read. Well, why don't you find one of the best ones ever and read it 10 times? I've read that before. Reading it now, it's like I've never read it. Enthusiasm. Questions again. How much enthusiasm do you have for yourself as a chiropractor? How much enthusiasm do you have for chiropractic? How much enthusiasm do you have for your office and what you sell? I have to have high energy. I have to be excited about myself, excited about my chiropractic that I deliver, excited about my office, excited about my care plans, excited about how I re-sign people, excited about my wellness plans, excited for people to get results, excited for people to bring in referrals, excited, 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 energy, 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 enthusiasm, enthusiasm, enthusiasm. Tori, things really aren't going that well. What's the problem? Well, you know when you get down to the core of it, it is enthusiasm. They're not excited about what they do, so how could anybody else get excited? Yeah, but this has happened and that happened. You have to be enthusiastic about chiropractic. That is separate from what's going on in your life. Oh, you're waiting for something to make you happy? Waiting for something to fall into place for you? So then you can be enthusiastic? Okay. Don't mind those weights clanking in the background. I have an unruly employee who's back there working out and making a bunch of noise. I'll wait for her to snap at me. <laughs> well, she takes her workout seriously. Why? She's enthusiastic about her training. She's enthusiastic about the things she's doing with her workouts. Enthusiastic about things she wants to do. And what? Hope for future achievement in the world of her physical training. Okay? So enthusiasm. Tori, how do I get more enthusiastic? <laughs> Either you are or you aren't. If you're waiting for something to happen to make you enthusiastic, forget it. You have it or you don't. And by the way, if you can't be enthusiastic about chiropractic, what could you be enthusiastic about? What could be cooler than chiropractic? It's like one of the coolest things on earth. But again, the food... The air, the water, the TV, the media are trying to get you down and get you disappointed and get you full of fear and get you full of envy and get you full of spite and get you full of ego and all of these negative emotions that lead people to ruin. And we have to go, no, 
I'm going to have peace. I'm going to have joy. I'm going to have love. I'm going to have certainty. I'm going to have power. I'm going to have enthusiasm. It's just a choice. You just decide to have it. Again, you cannot wait for something outside you to make you happy. If you think some other person is going to make you happy, you're going to be waiting a long time. You have to just decide to be happy. You are in control of your mind. Or are you? Are you really in control of your mind? Or have you been allowing other people to control your attitude, your outlook, your enthusiasm? You are in control. You can think whatever you want to think. And remember, it has nothing to do with what's going on. You could be scraping your belly and low or completely out of money. You could have some things bugging you physically. You can have some relationship things that are stressing you out like crazy. Some people in those circumstances are still upbeat. They still have a positivity. They still have enthusiasm. Some people in those exact same circumstances are down and depressed and they look tired and they look like they can't sleep and they've kind of given up. It's sickening. In fact, I heard the other day, show me a person's ability to handle stress and I'll tell you how successful they are or how successful they're going to be. What is that person saying? To the degree that you can maintain enthusiasm in the face of lots going on in your life, that is the determinant for success. We call it your AQ, your adversity quotient. How much does it take before you break and get weak and fall apart and your brain is full and you can't process, you can't calculate anymore? Some people, it's nothing. The tiniest thing. Oh, they messed up on my business card and they're like completely ruined. Other people, they've got a building that's being repossessed and something is happening here and that's going on over there and you would never, ever know it. And by the way, okay, their enthusiasm, their energy, all of that is what ultimately will bring them through. So enthusiasm, enough. I got a quick story here that ties into enthusiasm. If a person lacks enthusiasm with their work, do you think they would be actively involved in doing their best work at age 90? Never. People who lack enthusiasm, they can't wait to retire. They can't wait to quit. They can't wait to bail out. Can't wait to fall asleep at the wheel. People with enthusiasm for what they're doing, if you have enthusiasm for it, why would you quit doing it? Who's the most famous American architect of all time? How old was he when he passed away? What year did he pass away? Why was he the greatest American architect of all time? Now, this is a couple generations ago, so younger people may not know, and it's too bad because we have to learn from the true geniuses, the true masters. Of course, I'm talking about the great Frank Lloyd Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T. I have many stories of Frank Lloyd Wright being involved a little bit in architecture myself as a student. Having lived in the Wisconsin area where he lived. Having a chance to see several of the things that he designed and built and have my mind blown at how incredible they are. He's in his upper 80s and he gets a commission and it's the ultimate commission for an architect, a museum in New York City, right by Central Park. Wow. New York City Museum. 
This is big. This isn't a house for Jimmy and Jenny, okay, in rural Kansas, okay? This is New York City Museum, and Frank Lloyd Wright gets the, gets the call. He starts designing this project. The project starts to drag a little bit, but everything is okay. It was no surprise at the time. And then it starts to drag a little bit and some people are starting to complain because it hasn't started construction. Then it finally starts construction. And the construction starts and this building starts to take shape coming up out of the ground. And it's getting a little bit behind and starting to get a little bit behind on money and requires more funding. And of course, the people in the city are, are getting angry because the roads have been blocked off for too long. And the building starts to come out of the ground and it kind of looks like this a, a beehive. And people are going, what is this? Where, where's our fancy glass box of a museum as the modern buildings were back in the 50s? And then they'd run out of some money again and then all of a sudden, okay, the um, contractors are having trouble with the city and the permits and all of this. And it starts to create such a big mess between the city and between the developers and between the people that lived in the area that they put an article in the Wall Street Journal, excuse me, the New York Times, not the Wall Street Journal. There was an article that came out in the New York Times that said, Frank Lloyd wrong. And they criticized the way this building looked they criticized how long it was taking. They criticized that it had gone over budget. And they just criticized all the way through. What did Frank Lloyd Wright do? What did he do? He's got the biggest newspaper on earth and all of these people coming down on him. What does he do? Does he get scared? Does he say, I'm sorry? Does he say, what do you think we should do? Does he say, I I'll try to fix it? Absolutely not. He puts his own little article in the New York Times, and he says this. Well, maybe all of you people, because by the way, in this, we're, we're like the artist people, like the artist guild people and sculpture people and all that. They were involved in this also. He comes out and says in his article a few days later, well, maybe all of you would produce better art if you knew what was going to go in my museum. Wow. Maybe you all would produce better art if you knew it was going to go in my museum. Can you believe that? And sure enough, if you could get your art in the Guggenheim Museum in downtown New York City, you have made it to the top of the mountain in this country. And to this day, the Guggenheim stands supreme. In fact, now, this is a podcast. It's meant for audio. What was so amazing about the Guggenheim is he made it so there was a ramp and you walked around this ramp looking at all the artwork and then when you got to the very... It was one smooth, continuous flow of looking at all of the artwork. And then when you got to the top and looked down, it was revealed to you the supreme piece of artwork, which was the building itself. He used his classic principle of compression and expansion. He brings you into an entryway. He forces you to come around and go, come in the entryway with a very low ceiling where you feel like you're being compressed. Then you walk in and you walk and all of a sudden, boom, it opens up all the way to the ceiling and the ceiling was made of tubular glass that spread the light perfectly throughout the museum. And when you looked up, you went, whoa! And people realized that the ultimate piece of artwork was the building itself. 
And when you left, yes, the artwork may have been fantastic, but you left and you were, you were struck. You were impressed. You were never the same again because of the experience you had inside that building. That's what a Frank Lloyd Wright space does. Frank Lloyd Wright can make an eight foot high ceiling seem like 10 feet. How does he do that? I don't know, because if I knew, I would do it myself, says a famous architect. So I want you to go take a look at pictures of the Guggenheim inside and out. See what you think and realize that was built back in the late 50s. It wasn't built yesterday. That was built like 60 something years ago. Incredible Frank Lloyd Wright story. Why do I bring that up? Enthusiasm. He was enthusiastic about his artwork. He was enthusiastic about his craft. He was enthusiastic about these opportunities. He was enthusiastic about how the people could enjoy this building long after he's gone. I've been inside there. I felt it. I hope you have a chance to go. If you're ever in Phoenix, go and take a tour of his house that he built to live during the cold weather in Wisconsin. It's called Taliesin West. Taliesin means shining brow. The house he had in Wisconsin is called Taliesin. Taliesin West was the house he built outside of Phoenix. We had a seminar there once. We took everybody out there for a tour. It was unbelievable. It's everything I can do to not tell stories about that house let alone the Falling Water House, let alone the Johnson Wax Building, which is labeled the most incredible interior space ever designed. We'll save that story for another time. I'm inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright. They would say that uh, when it came time for him to draw, a couple apprentices would stand behind him and they would sharpen pencils. No calculators in those days. He had a T-square and rulers. And when he went to draw, everybody just stood back and watched in awe. Because what he did, he truly was a genius. In fact, he's being interviewed on TV okay, by shows like 60 Minutes uh, back in that day. Who, What architect gets on national TV and do they listen to on world affairs and matters? Okay, Well, Frank Lloyd Wright, because... because the great Mike Wallace, who was uh, one of the most popular voices of the TV show 60 Minutes for like decades, he interviewed Frank Lloyd Wright years ago. Black and white, cigarettes blazing. You might pull this up. Frank Lloyd Wright interview. And you'll see it. And Wallace reports after the fact, he goes, For a while I thought that I was interviewing Wright. But after a while I realized he was interviewing me. And you get to see how smart he actually is. So, enthusiasm. He gets up into 90 plus years of age, enthusiastic about his work, enthusiastic in every way, finishes his career with one of the most incredible interior spaces and buildings in the country. And I'm encouraging you, and I'm encouraging myself to have enthusiasm for chiropractic, enthusiasm for the work, enthusiasm for learning, enthusiasm for sharing it with people and becoming better at communicating, enthusiastic as it relates to improving our chiropractic adjustments, enthusiasm all the way through as it relates to chiropractic. All right? Don't mind the phone ringing here. All kinds of action here. Chiropractors around the country, chiropractors around the world, wanting to grow their practices, wanting to visit about the higher road. Love to see you be in Winter's Edge. If you have enthusiasm for chiropractic and enthusiasm for doing something impressive with your practice and enthusiasm towards helping people toward higher ground with chiropractic awesomeness, you are in the right place here at Winter's Edge. Let's finish with maybe one more little tidbit here from our book as it relates to enthusiasm. We'll wrap this up. If your thoughts and your actions and your words harmonize, you are bound to influence those with whom you come in contact more or less toward your way of thinking.
If you have enthusiasm in your thoughts, enthusiasm in alignment again with your beliefs, enthusiasm again with how you share and how you speak it, and you got all these things lined up, what you're thinking, what you're saying, and what you're doing, there's no way you can't grow, and there's no way you can't have people want to be with you every step of the way. Tori out.